During periods when we have very strong equity returns, companies often decide to split their stocks into smaller chunks, and that reduces the stock price. But that hasn't happened much over the last decade. So when Apple and Tesla decided to do it in August in 2020, it was a big deal. So in this video, we focus on three reasons why companies might decide to do a stock split, but also the mechanics of how it's done, and more importantly, how it affects the share price. So if you do want to learn more about economics and how it affects markets, then why not sign up to our free weekly market roundup? There'll be a link in the description below me and above me. So let's look at stock splits in a bit more detail. This is not a recommendation. If you want advice tailored to your specific circumstances, seek independent financial advice. So what is a share split? Well, a good metaphor is the way people sell pizza. Sometimes you don't want to eat a whole pizza in one go. You may just want one slice. So some pizza companies have started selling single slices of pizza to satisfy that demand. And if you already own a pizza, then slicing it up into smaller pieces doesn't change what you own. Instead of one big pizza, here you've got eight slices of pizza. So with that example in mind, let's look at the recent stock split announced by Apple. Now this was a four for one split, which meant that existing shareholders of Apple would have received three additional shares for each share which they already owned. And the date on which the list of people who owned Apple stock was taken was called the record date. And that was August the 24th, 2020. Now the sequence of events which take place during a share split are as follows. The list of existing shareholders who are eligible for extra stock is taken on the record date. And then the actual share split will happen after the close of business on the split date. And then on the X date, which was Monday the 31st of August for Apple, when Apple shares started trading at the split adjusted price. Now the key thing to understand is that if you're an existing shareholder, your shares will have exactly the same monetary value. So let's say you had 10 shares of Apple trading at $400 per share, and this is just before the share split. The total value of those shares would be $4,000. Then after the split, the value of the shares would go down by a factor of 4 to $100 per share, but instead of 10 shares, you'd now have 40. But after both adjustments, the total value of your holding is still $4,000. If we look at the price to earnings valuation of your stock, that's also exactly the same. The price to earnings ratio is a very good way to value stock, and this is simply the share price divided by the earnings per share. In the stock split, the price will go down by a factor of four. The total monetary value of the earnings is completely unchanged, but there are four times as many shares. So the earnings per share will also go down by a factor of four. And consequently, the price to earnings will be exactly the same. If everything is effectively unchanged, then why bother to split at all? The red line in this graph taken from the FT is the average share price for stocks in the S&P 500. And you can see it's gradually increasing over time because we've had a decade of very strong equity returns. The blue line is the number of share splits per year. Notice how it peaks when we have a peak in the equity market. So this was the dot-com bubble, and this was the peak just before the global financial crisis. So when share prices are going up rapidly, that's when you tend to have more share splits. However, this latest bull run in the equity market for the last 10 years is fairly unusual in that there have been decreasing numbers of share splits. And that makes the decision by Apple and Tesla to do share splits in August 2020 quite unusual. If you look at the reason Apple's given for the stock split, they say they want their stock to be more accessible to a broader base of investors. Now that justification would have been much more believable in the past, but many brokers now offer fractional share trading, such as Robin Hood. So instead of having to buy a whole share of a company or exchange traded fund, these brokers allow you to trade very small pieces of shares. So stocks and ETFs that cost hundreds or thousands of dollars can be bought for as little as $1, including that of Apple. Now this isn't true of all brokers, but now that Robin Hood's offering it, I suspect it'll become standard for everyone. So let's look at three hypotheses as to why companies do stock splits. The first one is the trading range hypothesis. 
These are the stock prices of the 500 stocks in the S&P 500 as of the end of August 2020. They vary very widely, which is why the x-axis is a logarithmic scale, with $1,000 on the right and $10 on the left. What you can see immediately is that most stocks trade at about $100. People are kind of keyed in to that $100 share price. So if your company's stock is trading at $1,000 or more, then it looks a bit weird. But if you then do a stock split, it'll take you into this sweet spot in the roughly $100 range. Now, some stocks don't want to do share splits, and Warren Buffett was a famous example. He thought that by having smaller increments for his share prices, it would attract the wrong kind of investor, people who invested just for speculation and who had a short-term mindset. What he wanted was investors who had the same mindset as he does, which is an intention to stay for a long time. And as a consequence, the shares of Berkshire Hathaway, which he bought in the 60s for $11, are now worth over $330,000, which is actually more than the median house price in the US, which is about $313,000. Eventually, in 1996, Berkshire B shares were issued, which are worth one fifteen hundredth as much as Berkshire A. Now, if you buy Berkshire B shares, notice how the returns will be almost identical to Berkshire A. It just trades in smaller chunks. So currently you can buy Berkshire B shares for just over $200. If you're wondering what about $300,000 will buy you in the United States, you can buy a seven-bedroom house in Florida with a swimming pool for about $330,000, which is pretty good for a single share. The second hypothesis is to do with liquidity, which means a typical trading volume and indirectly, how much it costs to trade your shares. Now, if there's more liquidity, the shares will cost less to trade. If we look at Berkshire Hathaway A and B shares, A shares only trade about 400 shares per day, whereas B shares trade almost 3 million shares per day. And if we convert that to a monetary value by multiplying the number of shares per day by the share price, Berkshire Hathaway A trades about $62 million worth of shares per day whereas Berkshire Hathaway B turns over about six times as much, just over $350 million per day. So in this really extreme example, it certainly does seem to be true that when you have a smaller share price for exactly the same thing, that gives you more liquidity. The third and final hypothesis we'll think about is the signalling hypothesis. So here's company management on the left. Of course, this is a CEO of Tesla, Elon Musk, and here I've got one of Tesla's investors. Now, for regulatory reasons, it might be the case that Tesla can't tell you how well it's doing. Of course, the company will have access to all the information about how their company is performing. And that information isn't fully available to every investor. So in other words, there's an information asymmetry between the investor and the company management. But by doing a stock split, the company is signalling that the company is performing very well and that may break down the information asymmetry and signal to the investors that the company is doing very well. Now let's look at how the actual share price is affected by one of these stock splits. Fortunately, Apple has done many stock splits. It's done it five times since the company went public. And what I've shown here is the share price relative to the day when the stock actually split, with day zero being the stock split day and I've tracked the share price for the 30 days following the stock split and for the 30 days preceding the stock split on the left. And I've scaled it such that the share price on the stock split day was exactly 100. So this was the stock split in 1987 for Apple. And you can see that the share price seems to increase after the stock split, although there was little wobble afterwards. Then in 2000, there also seemed to be an increase in the share price leading up to the stock split. However, after this, there was a very severe fall in the price of Apple in the wake of the dot-com bubble bursting. And in 2005 and in 2014, there was a steady run-up in the share price leading up to the share split. Combining all of those into one graph and adding the latest share split in 2020 here in black, this seems to be the best run-up that there's ever been. But statistically, to do this properly, you'd have to correct for factors like momentum and motion of the market overall. It may just be that equities were rallying during these periods. 
Someone who has done this properly is Gahini Joshi as part of her MSc thesis in 2014 at Tilburg University and she focused on tech stocks between 2000 and 2013. Combining the returns of many stocks, she found something fascinating, which is that leading up to the announcement date, which is the graph in red, the share price increased after the announcement, and that effect was very significant. Whereas days later, when the actual stock split happened, the stock price movement didn't change significantly. So it seems like the signaling effect, which happens on the announcement date, is much more significant than the actual physical splitting of the stock. She also tracked the effect on the stock prices for a whole year after the splits and found significant increases in both the return on assets and the liquidity of the stocks. She also tested the trading range hypothesis, which is the idea that bringing the share into line with other stock prices makes it more attractive to investors and thereby widens the shareholder base, so more people are able to buy the stock. And what she found was that the trading range hypothesis wasn't supported by her data. And neither was the widening of the shareholder base, which is somewhat surprising given that the shareholder base hypothesis is the justification most commonly given by companies for doing stock splits in the first place. So now let's look at Tesla based on what we've learned. They announced their stock split, which was a 5 for 1 stock split, on August the 11th, 2020. And their justification, which is fairly standard, was that this would make stock ownership more accessible to employees and investors of Tesla. The record date would be August the 21st, and the stock split date was August the 28th, with the shares first trading at their new lower price on August the 31st. So here's the new share price of Tesla, which is five times smaller than it was before the split, adjusted backwards in time. And I've shown it here since the beginning of 2020. The dash red line was the announcement date, and the dash blue line was the date when the stocks actually split. And as we've seen, the announcement itself seems to be the trigger for the increase in the share price, whereas the physical splitting of the stock seems to be less significant. The momentum actually reversed after the split. And if we look at the trading volume for Tesla in millions of shares traded per day, that also seems to increase on the announcement date and then it stays high all the way through the actual stock split, which doesn't seem to cause a secondary increase. So it's interesting that most of the share price increase comes after the announcement, which is unpredictable, rather than the stock split itself, which is predictable. And that means that it's very difficult to trade around those announcements for most people. But also, it's interesting that you do get an increase in the share price for a whole year after the stock split. That may not be because the stock split increases the price, but it's because it's a signal that the company's doing well. If you enjoyed that video and you want to support us, then why not join our online community? You get access to all sorts of goodies, such as our online chat application Slack, where you can ask questions of me or any other members of the community. And you get to join our Sunday evening live call, where you get to ask questions of me and I answer them live as best I can. And you get access to a growing video library, which is only available to Patreon supporters. And alongside those videos, you also get notes, which allow you to follow the links and research topics in more detail for yourself. So if you do want to support us and get access to all those goodies, just click on the icon for Patreon on the far side of this page. And as always, thank you for listening.